अनुसंधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी एटले संधान हेलो नून एवरीबॉडी आई एम उर्वशी देसाई जॉइंट बाय माय कलीग कृष्णा शाह we are here from dolat usha institute of applied sciences walsad we will be presenting a lecture today on the collection handling and transport as well as the lab diagnosis of the clinical samples the clinical samples which we will be focusing today will be cerebrospinal fluid sputum urine and blood before we begin with our lecture first let us define what is a clinical sample specimens which are collected from the patient such as blood urine feces cerebrospinal fluid ascitic fluid pleural fluids are called as clinical samples for accurate lab diagnosis the first thing which should be made in mind is all specimens should be of the highest possible quality as the specimens are collected the requirements which are to be met is that all the specimens should be properly selected properly collected and the specimen should be collected if possible before any medicine that is antimicrobial therapy is given the sample should be collected from a site where the pathogen is most likely to be present supposing in case of wound bacterial infection then it should be collected from the site of injury when to collect the sample should be collected when the disease it is at its most acute stage that is where it is the most prominent but it should be kept in mind that the specimen should be collected from the patient with utmost care and possible technique because the patient is already in distress and further harm can depress the patient it should also be kept in mind the amount of sample which is to be needed because all the tests which are to be performed from a sample should be collected from one time it is not possible to collect the samples from different time beginning with the first clinical sample cerebrospinal fluid also commonly called as a csf csf is present in the cavity surrounding the most vital part of the body the brain and the spinal cord it is formed by the selective dialysis of the plasma by the parts of brain called as a choroid plexus present in the ventricles of the brain this csf has two main functions it protects the brain and the spinal cord from any other external injury and it acts as a medium for the transport of substances that is from the blood to the brain and from the brain towards the blood the csf fluid is to be collected with utmost technique and training the patient is asked to take a position with the knees up so that your uh, spinal cord is the most prominent then from between your third and the fourth vertebra with the help of a sterile special needle called a stylet which is inserted into the spinal cord about 4 to 5 cm deep and the sample is collected into a special sterile tubes which are there labeled for marked for each uh, patient but it should be kept in mind that the sample can be collected only by a proper trained nurse technician or a doctor after withdrawal of the stylet the fluid is collected through the needle directly into the two sterile tubes this is a diagram for the special needle for the csf collection that is the stylets original with the stainless steel nowadays modified with the help of plastic syringes and the csf sterile vials in which the sample is collected the two tubes in which the csf is collected the first tube which should be totally sterile is kept for the bacterial examination in case of bacterial infection is suspected tube 2 may be used for various biochemical examinations the it should be kept in mind that this collection technique is very tedious and very strenuous for the patient also hence once the sample is collected the specimen should be directly used for analysis but it should also be kept in mind that this sample may contain virulent organisms that is those which can cause a disease so therefore it is very necessary to handle the sample very carefully and tactfully how do we analyze the cerebrospinal fluid in the laboratory there are three main techniques 
physical examination, microscopic examination and chemical examination. Physical examination means the examination by the sample with your naked eyes. In physical exa examination, we observe for parameters like color of the sample, appearance, whether it is turbid, hazy, clear, presence of blood as in case of hemorrhage or presence of clot or fibrin wave as in case of various pathogens. In microscopic examination, the sample is subjected to different types of staining techniques to observe for various kind of specimens which may be there. For example, gram staining is done to identify if the bacterial contamination may be there, if it is gram positive or gram negative. Acid fast staining is done in case of suspected tuberculosis infection where your acid fast organisms will be differentiated from non acid fast. Same way, if the pus formation is observed, then the WBC or the white blood cells of a system are differentiated with the help of differential count or in case total WBC count may also be taken. In case of chemical examination, there are three main parameters for observation, concentration of glucose, protein and chloride. Glucose is of utmost necessary for the uh, brains and the spinal cord as they cannot utilize glucose only in form of energy. Protein concentration varies along with different diseases as in case of oedema, hemorrhage, etc. So that analysis is important and chloride acts as a secondary messenger for the transfer of the nerve impulses. Hence the chloride concentration varies in different diseases. What is the clinical significance or why the CSF analysis is done? It is done in case of diseases like meningitis in which the middle uh, membrane of the brain that is called as meninges is infected, encephalitis in which there is acute chronic infection of the brain cells, spinal cord tumor that is a cancer, multiple sclerosis in which number of small sclerons are formed, uh, lesions are formed in different parts of the brain, CNS syphilis or subarachnoid hemorrhage in which Subarachnoid is a layer between your outermost that is dura matter and innermost that is pia matter. From this subarachnoid, if there is hemorrhage, then that blood may overflow into the cerebrospinal layer and may indicate the presence of blood. Good afternoon everybody. Now I would start with the second type of fluid that is present in our respiratory tract in that is specifically I can say in the lungs. Now this sputum, it is a colorless, watery, odorless tracheobronchial secretion which passes through lower and upper respiratory tract. Usually this sputum, it becomes more viscous, more mucoid when the infection persists inside the lungs. The lower respiratory tract is usually maintained sterile whenever there are no infection found in the lungs. But sometimes when this sputum is being exploited outside at that time it becomes contaminated with <coughs> cellular exploitations, nasal and salivary gland secretions and normal bacterial flora of oral cavity and the upper respiratory tract. If we see the composition of the sputum, sputum it is made up of 95% water and 5% the solid contents are present. This solid contents which are present they are usually carbohydrate, lipids, proteins and the nucleic acid that is DNA. All this solid matter it increases in number when the lungs or the lower respiratory tract are infected. Now the first thing is that how the sample should be collected from the patient. Sputum sample is usually best collected in the morning as soon as the patient wakes up. Special instructions are given to the patients that while they are remove while they are the taking out the sputum sample at that time they should cuff deeply so that the sample is accurately collected and it is not been contaminated with the saliva. The samples which are been collected, they should be collected in a wide mouth leak proof container. 
usually this containers which are in which the sputum sample is collected has to be immediately or within few time transported to the laboratory at during that period patient can keep this sample at room temperature but if it is going to take time and that would create problem in the sample that is in the morphology of organisms so during that time it should be stored at 4 degree centigrade but in the case of streptococcus pneumoniae or h influenza infections the specimens they should be sent to laboratory uh, immediately and the process of inoculation should be started as early as possible this is the container that you can see which is used to collect the sputum sample the first figure is the container which has been now replaced by the second figure that is with the help of an extra container outside which will help to keep the sterile container very much sterile inside it this can be transported to the laboratory for further <coughs> investigation now when it reaches to the laboratory the diagnostic path starts usually for the diagnosis the physical examination as well as the microscopic examination is been carried out let us first see the physical examination in the physical examination the sputum sample is examined by the eyes that is by looking at them to see whether there is change in the color usually when infection occurs the sputum sample turns greenish in color also the sample in usual condition is odorless but during the infection it may have a putrid odor the consistency appearance and layer formation are also been studied layer formation can be studied by placing the sputum sample into a test tube for 1 to 2 hours after 2 hours you will find the layer formed by which you can carry out the judgment whether the sample is of which kind of uh, you can say infected organisms the second thing that is the microscopic examination for microscopic examination there are different preparations which have been carried out first of all the sputum sample can be prepared by not staining them that is the unstained preparation this unstained preparation can be prepared by placing a drop of sputum on the slide and covering with a cover slip and looking into a low power objective to see the different types of cell involved during the infection as well as the different types of bacteria the second type of stain that is the gram staining in the gram staining the staining procedure will allow you to differentiate between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria because most of the gram positive bacteria are prone to cause the infection for example the streptococcus pneumoniae the third one that is the acid fast staining the acid fast staining usually differentiates between non acid fast and acid fast bacteria the acid fast bacteria that is the mycobacterium tuberculosis is prone to cause tuberculosis in the lungs so this also is one of the important criteria to be studied the last technique that is the dc that is the direct count differential count of the wbc which is carried out by the right stain in which the different cells involved during the infection to fight against the infection are been studied and are count so as to know how much infection has been spread inside the lungs next thing is the culture part culture part means over here the microorganisms <coughs> colonies their morphology their structures have been studied usually whenever this sputum culture is been carried out the preparation is such that the 5 to 10 ml of sputum sample is been washed out so as to remove the other impurities which may be present during the coughing by the patient this sputum which is been washed is been plated or inoculated on the blood agar and chocolate agar plates and this plates are further 
incubated at 37 degree centigrade for 18 and or 24 hours. Usually, this plating technique is been carried out to find out whether the patient is suffering from the different type of infection caused by the bacteria Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus, Klebsiella pneumoniae and the Haemophilus influenza. Another medium is also used in the form of broth that is called as the algae culture broth. This algae culture is usually formed in the uh, that is the broth is converted into an agar which is been at 45 degree of the slope. In this slope that is the algae slope the sputum sample about 200 micro, microliter is been placed in such a way that whole the slant is been covered with the sputum sample and this tube is been further incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for around 7 to 8 days or more than that. Usually it is 7 to 8 weeks but this test is been carried out specially for the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria which are very slow growers and hence it takes more time to grow. Now let us see the clinical significance <coughs> of the sputum. Sputum is usually causing different types in sputum is usually studied for the different types of disease like chronic bronchitis that is the infection occurring inside the bronchi which connects the lungs second in the pneumonia that is the sputum that is the lungs are highly infected with the sputum third is pulmonary embolism Pul uh, pulmonary embolism means the aggregation of the platelets in the form of emboli in the pulmonary vein. Other diseases like asthma that is due to the allergen entering into the respiratory tract, lung abscess that is the uh, pus formation found inside the lungs due to the microorganisms